Hi everybody. Um, so I'm not going to sugarcoat the truth for you. Uh, Amber Heard did beat me up the other night and that is where I sustained these injuries. Um, no, as uh, some of you have been following me on Instagram know, um, I was in a unfortunate uh, car accident and um, I actually, this is me actually looking really good. I've got makeup on and this is like uh, a little over a week out, I guess a week out from the the accident. And then you can see, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I've got like this really long deep stitch set of stitches at the, uh, at the hairline and then this, and I've got bruises everywhere, but um, it really could have been so much worse and I'm okay. And uh, you know, didn't even have to like, spend the night in the hospital or anything. So anyway, um, but yeah, this is as good as it's gonna, as it's gonna be looks wise, uh, for tonight. So I just wanted to, it's been a while since I've done a video. I think it's almost been three weeks, two and a half weeks. Um, which for me is a long time. I normally try to get them out like once a week, once every two weeks at the most. Uh, but this did happen unexpected. Um, so anyway, um, I feel like we've been basically at a kind of a standstill with the Marilyn Manson situation since, um, well, since the Sundance Film Festival and Evan Rachel Wood's documentary, Phoenix Rising, um, premiered or screened there. Uh, and so we know that's going to be coming out um, in, in a few weeks, I guess. It's supposed to come out sometime in March. And it seems like with these documentaries, uh, they like to do these these ambushes where they, they don't let they don't let anybody know until like a week out um, when when the uh, the the premiere is going to be. So anyway, I don't know exactly when. I don't think anybody knows exactly when, but it's going to be sometime in March on HBO that this two part documentary um, that I've already seen the first part of because it screened uh, virtually at Sundance, but this two part documentary by Amy Berg about Evan Rachel Wood and the others and their, you know, their, their abuse, supposed abuse by Marilyn Manson and their fight for justice, et cetera, et cetera. That's gonna be coming out in a few weeks and that's gonna be a big deal. Uh, you know, there's no, there's no way to sugarcoat that either. It's gonna be a big deal. And, uh, you know, again, I think that I, I know I keep, I sound like a broken record with this, um, but I really believe more and more that um, the, a day of reckoning, or I should say days of reckoning are coming. Uh, and um, so anyway, even though things seem really just uh, pretty black right now, uh, what's that, um, what's that, that, that phrase that's falsely attributed to, uh, to Mao Zedong? Um, it's a, it's a joke. It goes like this. It's always, just remember, it's always darkest right before it's completely pitch black or something like that. <laughs> but that actually like Mao didn't say that. Um, not that I'm a Mao defender, but Mao did not say that. I think that's something that John McCain, it was, a, it was a joke that John McCain used to tell and he would attribute it to Chairman Mao. So anyway, no, but I really do. Um, you know, it's things are not things are not great right now um, in in with the Marilyn Manson situation from the perspective of, of those of us who believe that he's innocent and that this whole thing is a hoax. But um, with with every with every new sort of injustice or outrage, I, I get more and more determined, and it's not a blind determination. Like I just really think that there, I think there is some kind of of, of karma or reckoning for this, and I don't know. So let's, uh, let's, let's hold on and see what happens. But I, I can tell you this, I'm continuing to do interviews with people and, um, I've got, I, I don't want to give it away, but I've got a couple of, um, of big ones, I think pretty big ones in the works. No, it's not celebrities or former band members or anybody like that, but like people that, um, that I think in, in significance are on par, um, with, uh, certainly with the other people that I've interviewed in terms of like their, their relevance to the situation and to the allegations. Um, and so I've got that coming out and, um, you know, we'll see when this HBO documentary comes out, I plan to, I, I, I've already seen the first part of it. So I already have planned out, um, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna put this out the week of the documentary, um, when the press starts before it premieres. I've already planned out a rebuttal to the first part that I've seen and it's, it'll be like an hour long video. And so I'm gonna do that and I'll put that out, uh, like I said, uh, before the documentary. And then when the documentary comes out, I'm gonna look at the second part and I'm gonna put together a rebuttal for that and just gonna keep it up. 
Uh, now, as a number of you know, I do other stuff. I do Johnny Depp uh, reporting. That's about to get started. That trial, man, that is going to be crazy. Oh, talk about a day of reckoning, uh, Ms. Heard. It's going to be a day. It's going to be some days of reckoning for you, I believe. And uh, and then, uh, you know, I like to do the philosophy videos, and I'm going to try to step that up. So as much as I can, you know, I've recovered um, a lot from this. And um, so that's what I've got planned in the future. And like I said, I've taken a bit of a hiatus. It's been like two and a half weeks, but I'm getting into it. Now, one of the things that I wanted to play for you that I haven't played before, and those of you who are interested in the Marilyn Manson situation will find this particularly interesting. Uh, as a number of you know, I was contacted uh, several months ago um, by seemingly kind of random Instagram D, uh, DM, but uh, I was contacted by the uh, LA uh, Sheriff's Department um, as a part of their investigation of some stuff related to the Marilyn Manson situation. And I don't want to go into any more detail than that. Um, and so I, I did, I did have a conversation with one of their detectives on the case and I did record my end of that conversation with his knowledge. And I haven't, I haven't aired it, uh, but I, I really want, what I really want to play for you, I don't want to play any of his end of the conversation, um, which I didn't, which I didn't even get, or e even the pauses or anything. I don't, I don't want to play the conversation for you, but I just want to play some, some excerpts of what I said to him. Because, you know, I think that I, I just, I, I, I just, I, I've been trying to summarize sort of in my mind um, what I think are the most like salient points of this situation. And when I had the opportunity to, to speak to this detective, I had kind of like, I hadn't prepared a speech or anything, but I prepared in my mind, like, okay, I've got a certain amount of time with this guy. And, um, and what are the points that I want to make? Not that he was even soliciting, trying to solicit points from me. Okay. It wasn't like, I can say that he was not contact. He had not contacted me to get my opinion on the case. Right. But I thought that this would be, um, but I thought that this would be like an opportunity for me to, to get that in there. Um, and, and so, so anyway, I, you know, I've been thinking about that. And I thought you, some of you might be interested in hearing what I said to this detective, because again, I felt like this was my, my one shot just to basically plead uh, Marilyn Manson's case, but to try to do it in a way that's not, you know, I, I didn't want to be annoying. And so I didn't want to talk too much. Uh, and I, and I wanted to just speak from my heart. And so that's what I did. So I don't know, like I said, I'm not going to play anything that he said. I'm not going to play the conversation itself. Just want to play for you a little bit of what I said and um, and see what you think. And of course, looking back on it, wish I could have been more eloquent, but don't we always? Anyway, thank you those of you who have. Um, I'm going to play that in a minute, but uh, thank you those of you who've expressed concern. And God, I hate I hate going on camera and looking this bad. Like I couldn't even fix my hair because it's still. I know this is gross, but it's still like matted together, like with the blood. Um, and so it's it's really kind of nasty, right? But there's like a layer of like dried matted blood underneath this hair that you see. So anyway, the hair, I tried to put on some makeup, but you know, whatever, I've been in a car wreck, right? Um, and so anyways, I don't know where I was going with that, but my point is thank you to those who have, uh, who have expressed concern or whatever. I'm totally fine. Didn't have to spend the night in the hospital. It's just, it's just scary. And it, it sucked, you know, some of the pain and inconvenience, it sucked, but I'll be all right. And uh, so anyway, but thank you so much. And um, there, like I said, I'm I'm back on the case, so to speak. And, you know, not just the Marilyn Manson thing, but the Johnny Depp trial coming up. And, and then I want to I want to keep um, I want to keep producing the some of the philosophy videos that some of you really like, and, and branching out into other stuff. It's just it's just hard because I don't have <laughs> I don't have time, uh, you know, to do everything I'd like to do. But anyway. So that's what's on the horizon. I think I've got good stuff coming up. Um, you can find me on Patreon. You can contribute on PayPal if uh, if you feel so led, as they used to say in church. So anyway, all right. Well, y'all have a good night. Uh, I hope you find this this next thing interesting. You can leave some comments for me and tell me, would you have said this or what would you have said if you had a shot with the detective? All right, bye-bye. No, and I, I hope that uh, I feel confident that you're going to discover this, you know, if you haven't already. I don't know where you are in your investigation, but they really, I, I did not start off. I am not a, Ma a Marilyn Manson fan. Um, and so I, I actually don't care personally 
about this case, but I started this YouTube channel and for, for whatever reason, I just happened to hit on this, this case. And I really believe that uh, after looking at everything that's happened, I really believe that he is innocent and that this is a, a hoax. Um, and I think that, uh, and so my point being is I, I do talk about that in the videos and there are a number of people who have contacted me who also behind the scenes who have direct knowledge of things and they're scared to, to come forward and they, they're not willing to talk except to me. But I just want you to know, I, this is not, you know, I know this is just hearsay and this is not actual evidence, but that I'm giving you at this moment, but I, I just want you to know that there really are a lot of people who know that this is, this is not true. That these allegations are not true. And, um, and, and I hope that, you know, I hope that in the course of your investigation, you're able to, to get to those people. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to say as well is I, I think that, I think when you look at the way that a lot of these women have gone about this, uh, you know, doing these photo shoots and this is all of this, I mean, it's, it seems like a big media attention grab and money grab. And that's one thing, but I, I know that Evan Rachel Wood is a different category. And I feel like, you know, that's, that's one where people don't, where people say, well, why, you know, she's already a successful actress and everything. Why would she make this up? But I just hope that you, and I know that you're, you know, you, you do these sex cases a lot, uh, the nature of your job. I just, I just hope that you have an appreciation for how some people can be very emotionally disturbed and, and have personality disorders and have issues. And I hope that you'll take a look at Evan Rachel Wood's biography. Uh, I hope that you'll look at the, the, the dramatic transitions or changes that she has, has undergone in her personality and who she is and, and the, the instability of her relationships. And I, I guess you're aware of this, but her ex-husband, uh, Jamie Bell, uh, it's, it's come out uh, recently that in court documents, he accused her of making up this Manson stuff in order to keep um, him away from his son because she told, she told him that she was keeping him away from his son and even moved uh, because ostensibly she said she was so terrified of Marilyn Manson and Jamie Bell basically in these, these court documents called her a liar. And so anyway, I guess what I'm saying is this is a really complicated situation and I do believe he's innocent. And I just hope that, uh, I hope that you're able in your investigation, I'm sure you will, uh, if you're the LA, you're the LASD, I hope that you're able to, um, to really give serious attention to, to, to the other side of the, the situation, the, the other side of these allegations familiar too with with how with how this this thing came to be and how you know it wasn't an organic development it was something where you had you know some people actively recruiting and and um and, and so forth so anyway and i guess one one more thing i know you're a busy guy um is there what hypothetically speaking and i'm not even not even talking about manson anymore but just the law um is there are there any repercussions for if 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 hypothetically there were a hoax or hypothetically there were women who were knowingly falsely alleging these things are there any legal re repercussions or is that basically the law doesn't care if people <laughs> make up stuff and try to ruin other people's and um good luck to you and uh, again i appreciate you reaching out to me because it makes it makes me feel good to know that you're you're looking seriously at the situation all right